I'm exhibiting at Manchester Art Fair in November and I need some really good show-stopping pieces. You might have seen my huge lion in acrylics that I painted in my last video. Well, this video is about my entire process for painting with oils. I'm going to be talking about my methods, tools and the thoughts that go through my head when I'm painting in oils from start to finish piece. I'm not going as big with this painting, it's about 60 centimetres by 80 centimetres, which is about 24 by 32 inches, so it's still not small. The canvas is pre-primed with gesso. For acrylics, I add more gesso and sand it for a really smooth surface, but for oils, I like to have a little bit more tooth to the canvas, so I don't add any extra gesso. I'll explain why a little bit later on in the video. I'm planning on painting something a little bit different on this canvas and using it to step out of my comfort zone a little bit. So I used Photoshop and Procreate using my iPad to put together this reference photo of a wolf in the snow. It's made up of about 10 or 12 different reference photos all pieced together to create a brand new image. I'm working pretty logically with this piece, starting with the parts that are going to be the furthest back and then working my way forwards. I usually pre-mix my colours, so this step is about blocking in basic shapes, and I'll talk more about the paint and the colours later on in the video. For larger pieces like this, I like to project a rough outline onto the canvas first. This is my new projector and I'll leave a link to it in the description for anyone that wants to check it out. I want the background to be blurry and out of focus, so I'm not too bothered about getting everything exact. It's more about placing the colours in the right place. I'm just letting the texture of the canvas do the work, pulling the paint off the brush. I don't want to put loads of textured paint onto the canvas, just enough to cover all of the white. Then, to blur the background and create that out of focus look, I take a fan brush or a mop brush and blend the paint together. That's it for day one. I'm pretty happy with how it's looking so far, but I'm gonna stop for the day because it's quite late and I'll come back to it in the morning. Good morning. It's day two on this piece and it's time to add a little bit more depth to the background. Letting the painting dry overnight actually helps with what I've got planned next. The paint is tacky, but not completely dry to the touch, which means I can layer more paint over the top without it getting too muddy, but I can also still blend into yesterday's colours. I'm working on some of the background details today. I'm keeping things really simple, adding some branches with some snow on them. It's just basic block colours, a brown for the branch, then two colours for the snow, a base colour and a shadow. I don't need to go into loads of detail here because I'm keeping this soft and blended too. I'm trying to do something new by adding backgrounds to my pieces. One thing that I've learned is that you don't want to overcomplicate them. Backgrounds are there to push your subject forward so the background should contrast the subject. If your subject is sharp and in focus, then your background can be a little bit more blurry. If your subject's a little bit brighter and more colourful, then your background can afford to be a little bit darker with more muted colours. Composition is something that I am really trying to think about in my paintings. I don't want to just create a picture. I want to create a piece of art that someone can enjoy for an entire lifetime. In fact, I want to create art that will be remembered for lots of lifetimes. One way that I'm thinking about it is how I frame my painting. And I don't mean the wooden box that goes around the painting. I mean what elements of my painting are around the edges of the canvas, and how do those elements keep the viewer engaged with the painting and stop them from moving on. For this piece, it's more trees, slightly darker and covered in snow, slightly more rendered than the background, but still less than the wolf will be. 
Well, that's it for day two. My studio is only quite small. And it's really important that if you're working with oils, that you work in a well-ventilated space. It's getting a bit colder outside now, and I don't want to carry on painting with the doors open, so I'm going to call it for today and come back fresh in the morning. It's a new day. The sun is shining. Well, it's pretty miserable and raining, actually, but I am doing some more painting today, so I'm pretty excited. With all of my wildlife paintings, I always start with the eyes. The reason for this is the eyes are the focal point of the picture, and the focal point is the most important part. It doesn't matter what you're painting, choose a focal point for your viewer to be drawn to, and start with that. Make sure as you progress away from that point, the rest of the painting still points the viewer towards it. More often than not, with wildlife arts and portraits, the eyes are the source of life, and therefore the focal point of the painting. I like to try and remove as much mess as possible from my oil paintings, so I pre-mix a lot of my colours. I'm not going into colour mixing in this video, but one thing I do to streamline my process is to add my linseed oil medium to my paint using a dropper rather than using a brush. This way, all of my paint is the same consistency, it can be used straight off the palette, and there's none of that muddying of the paintbrushes and mixing colours wrong, it's just neat and tidy. I like to work pretty much wet in wets. I usually build up my basic mid-value colours first with a filbert brush, so that I can do big strokes with the flat edge, but also smaller refined strokes if I need to. Filbert brushes are usually one of my go-to brushes for all of my oil paintings. Once that small area is blocked in with the filbert brush, and it's still wet, I'll work over the top of it with some detail marks, going darker and lighter with those details. As I move away from the focal point and onto the rest of the face, I'm starting to want a bit less detail, or at least less intentional detail. The best way that i found to do this is by using bigger brushes. I'm still using the filbert brush for the blocking, but I'm using a much bigger round brush for that second pass to add the fur texture. I'm really trying to improve my colour work in my paintings, and one thing that I've noticed is I used to oversaturate my paintings. Having saturated colour is great, and it can really make a painting pop, but if it's everywhere, it just makes the painting look a little bit messy and a bit chaotic. I'm trying to be a little bit more intentional with the choices that I'm making for my painting. So I'm trying something new with my palette to see if it'll make a difference. This is something that I've started doing with my oil paints rather than my acrylics, but I've started adding four greys to my palette. I use these greys as a base for my colours. I have two darks and two lights. I mix the colours that I want with those greys, which allows me to neutralise my colours a little bit more. Then, in a few areas, I will use pure saturated colour, for example, in the eyes and the centre of the face. Those areas really then stand out from the rest of the painting. Again, if you're not painting a wolf for a portrait, I'm doing this in the focal point. All of the darkest shadows, the brightest lights, the most saturated colours, and the most details all go in those focal points. The aim is to get the viewer to look at the focal points, to look at the part of the painting that I want them to.
It's the end of day four, and I think I'm making pretty good progress with this piece, but I do need to get a move on. The exhibition is just over a month away, and if I don't finish the painting soon, it's not going to be dry in time to varnish. Good morning. We've got a full day of fur painting today, so let's get to it. As I'm moving further away from that focal point, I'm being less and less refined with the details. I want to talk a little bit about my thoughts when I'm using oils, as I know a lot of people struggle with them, but I don't really know why. Well, actually, I do. It's because people try to use them like acrylics. Lots of layers built up slowly. And I used to be exactly the same when I first started to transition from acrylics to oil paints. What I've learned over the last few months using oils is that oils are exactly the same as soft pastels. If you're comfortable with pastels, the only thing that's stopping you from being able to use oil paints is your physical colour mixing ability. Pastels have that convenience of loads of colours all ready to go in neat little sticks or pencils, whereas oils have a much more limited selection of colours straight from the tube. You have to mix your own. I work in exactly the same way with both of those mediums. A block in with the mid value colours, and then details over the top with lights and darks. You don't need loads of layers for pastels. You don't need loads of layers for oils. They're both highly pigmented mediums, so they cover your canvas and they both blend really easily. Acrylics are different. You do need lots of layers to blend and create those softer transitions. I actually have a video all about blending with acrylics, which I'll leave a link to in the description and at the end of this video. We're coming up to the end of day five now, and I can only really see there being only one more day of painting left on this piece. Good morning, it's day six, well actually technically day seven. I took the day off yesterday to film and edit a Patreon video. If you're not already a Studio Wildlife patron, what are you doing? Go and check out all of the full length videos and real time tutorials that I've got going on over there. And while you're signing up, I'm going to carry on with this painting. I said I'd mention why I don't add more gesso to my oil paintings. Really, it's personal preference. I like the grain of the canvas to pull the paint off the brush. Because I'm pretty much working a la prima or wet in wet, I don't want the paint to slip on a really smooth surface. I want it to stick and be able to take the blocking layer and the detail layer of paint without having to wait for each layer to dry. The final part of the wolf that's furthest from the focal point needs to be knocked back a little bit. It needs to almost merge with the background. This could be done literally by creating really soft edges between the wolf and the background. This works best if everything's still wet. It gives a much more impressionist feel to the painting. I want the back to merge visually, but not literally. So I'm going to blend it back the same way I did the background, using the mop brush and the fan brush to soften the details. This way, the brushwork on the wolf transitions into the same brushwork as the background as you move away from that focal point. That just helps with the flow of the piece and again, really helps guide the viewer to the desired parts of the painting. I'm not an expert at it yet, but I truly believe that it's thinking about small details like this that are going to push my pieces to the next level. Before we get on to the reveal of the final picture, I just want to show you how I finish all of my oil paintings and get them exhibition ready. I can't actually film this yet as the wolf isn't dry yet, but I use this, which is Gamvar Glossy Varnish. 
I really like this varnish because you can varnish your painting as soon as it's touched dry. It still allows that oil paint to oxidise and dry. I will leave the painting about a month if not longer before I'll varnish it. And even then I need to double check that everything is completely touched dry. I cannot tell you how many paintings I've nearly ruined by not waiting long enough before varnishing them. I'll leave a link in the description for the Gamvar Glossy Varnish so you can go and check it out if you want to. Right, let's get on to the reveal. Sometimes oil paints can't be used or you just might prefer acrylics. Either way, you'll want to check out my video that goes through my five essential blending tips for painting with acrylics that'll make people think you've painted them in oils. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please do leave a like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.